In this gym, I'm going to just give you a, um, let's say, ethnicity understanding. There were no Asians training back then, bro. Hardly any Asians training, especially in these hardcore gyms. There was no black guys training in these gyms. There was just predominantly white guys, you know? So it was my, you know, after leaving college and working the doors and seeing everybody there who's not Asian. Black guys used to work the doors. A very good friend of mine, you know, who was a mentor to me growing up. A black guy, um, you know, you know, God rest his soul, passed away. Wow, so that was like one of the first loss, losses that I had as a friend. And uh, it's funny actually, just I've not like, you know, it's one of those things that just crosses your mind. And it's so strange that he's actually, he died at the age that I am now. And I was 20 at the time, 21 at the time. So he's like, when he passed away, he was my age now, which just another thing, you know, just one of those weird things that I just re remembered him today because I'm telling this story. And it's very strange to think about that because I've not thought about him for a while. You know, it's, it's just the way it is. You know, people die. It's what happens. You don't think about him every single day. But I learned a lot from him. I did learn a lot from him. And a lot of, a lot of him is in me today. And you're going to find that with people. Like when I used to sit at that counter, hearing these guys, the stories, the banter, the way they were with each other, very rough and ready and abrupt. And it wasn't about, am I going to hurt this guy's feelings saying this? Or his hair looks messed up. I'm going to call him out on it. What shoes has he got on? What was he wearing that for? What is he doing this for? Any little thing that was off, these guys would call you on your BS. They would let nothing fly. You know, if you're often in conversations where you might have been in these situations, I've been in these situations myself, you hear a lad tell a story and the other guys are like, I don't know about that, that's a bit weird, but let's not say anything, we don't want to hurt his feelings. Often you walk around and you see someone's wearing something, you think, that's a bit strange. That's if you'd wear that, but let's not say anything. Don't hurt his feelings. We don't know him that well. Not in this situation. With these guys, there was anything wrong or anything off, they would call you out on your bullshit. And do you know what? I respect that a lot. I learned a lot of lessons in that. There's a lot of lessons in there. But going back to my friend who passed away, I have to mention him, you know, now that I've just thought about him. Um... And I have to say that when you go through life, there's certain people that you meet that are gonna change your life. There's a few people, not very many, I count on one hand, well, less than one hand, amount of people that have influenced me. And you kind of adopt a little piece of that person's soul, whether you believe it or not, in life. You, that other person might not ever realize this. He might not even know this. It could be somebody who's a celebrity who you're watching constantly over and over again on YouTube, on Facebook, or it could be anybody nowadays because now media is all over the place. It's on your phone. You only have to follow somebody to start listening to the guy and understanding the guy and thinking, you know what? This guy talks a lot of sense. I really like the way he's packaged things. I really like his ideas, his ideology. I really like the way he goes around business, about relationships, how he is with his family, with his kids and business. And you might take something from that person Three, four months down the line, you're having a conversation with somebody and you might be repeating that person's phrases or lines or quotes or ideas. So you don't necessarily know who's gonna invest a little bit, a little bit of their soul inside you. You don't know. We're like empty beings, really. You don't know when it's gonna come, who it's gonna come from, and how much of it's gonna come. But... I was one of those people at that age, and I'm speaking about the guys on the doors and the people that came to my gym and support from day one. I took a little bit off each person, and I was very good at doing that, and I'm still very good at doing it today. I might not sound like them, and I might not speak like them, or talk like them, or walk like them, or look like them. Definitely don't. But I listen, I observe, I understand. And right there and then, I learned a lot about business at that time. When people hand you currency, when give, people give you an exchange of notes and you're like, you, you take it and you write their name in the book, you paid on the 15th of January, 5th, 6th, 14th of January, your, your payments to you. All right, mate, I'll come and see. You get to understand who are the guys that aren't gonna pay, who are the guys that are gonna come and say, oh, sorry, mate, I totally forgot. You know, who's the guys that are gonna try and dodge the subs? Who are the guys that are gonna, you know, you learn a lot about who's who. It's a very strange world out there when people are giving you money. It's learning a lot. So sorry to sidetrack. <laughs> I just kind of went off, lost my train of thought there a little bit. The point I was trying to say, so that was business number two. 
First gym, that's how I like to remember, it was my first ever gym, purchased it off the guy. And, it, you know, the funny thing about it is, um, shall I say this now? I'm not, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it. I'm still friends with this guy after, let me guess how long it's been, 15, 16, 17, 17, almost 18 years ago. Almost 18 years ago, he sold me that gym, possibly longer, maybe, maybe, maybe 19 years ago. He actually supported me last year, he became a client of mine. How, we, how strange life is sometimes. That full swing, circle of life, I purchased a gym off him way back then, and then recently he was like, oh, you're doing online coaching? I'm like, yeah, he went, sign me up. And he signed up with me, I think he was with me for like six months or something. You know, very good guy, we're still very close, we're still good mates, we still speak every so often. And, uh, and, and that's, the, that's another thing, that's another thing in life as well. Never burn bridges. Always try to leave a situation, especially when it comes to business, in a good light. It's not that you might need that person somewhere down the line. It's not about that. Don't think that, oh, I'm going to need this person, so I better be mates with It's not about that. Don't ever step into any situation ever expecting to need that person. But life's about making connections with people. And I made connections with people early on good connections with people, respectable connections with people, where feelings were mutual. And that's how you kind of get on in life sometimes. So I don't know what you guys took from this video. I try not to script anything. Maybe you should script stuff, I don't know. But this is just something about business. It was my first introduction into the gym game. I learned how memberships worked. Because this was the first time I took membership. You know, This was the first time people handed over currency. They knew payments were due. They wanted a protein shake. I had to mix, mix the protein shake and then wash the cup out. Make sure the showers were clean. Make sure well, there was only one shower, not showers. There was one shower. Make sure nothing's left in the changing room. Make sure the locker keys are returned. Make sure the, gym, the plates are put back. There was so much to learn. But those days, unlike today, there was a lot of respect in gyms as well. Because it was such a very small gym, like the dumbbell rack was there. The squat rack was there. The deadlift platform was there. Do you know what I mean? Everything was very close. So nobody took the piss. Everybody put the stuff back exactly where it belonged because they knew not only are they doing an injustice to the gym owner by not putting stuff back, they're also doing an injustice to the people who are also there wanting to better themselves. Because those days, now you're in a gym, it's like, it's like cattle. You're in a gym, you're going through your turnstile or your cubicle, whatever it is, and you're in the gym and there's 500 other people inside the gym getting on with their own stuff. You even glance over to another girl in the mirror and you're on a Joy Swall video. Or she is. Yeah, she gets on a Joy Swall video. You don't. That's what happens. So it's a crazy gym culture right now. Back in those days, it wasn't like that. We respected each other. We understood each other. We knew why each other was there. I learned a big lesson as well. Right, right there and then. That the gym wasn't just a place for guys to go and train. Because for me, it was a place at that time to just go and train. Just go in there, get in training, get the hell out. But standing behind the counter, I realized that it was more than just training for guys. It was a place to get away from the missus, to get away from the kids, to get away from the TV, media, whatever it was at that time. There was no social media, but you know what I mean. To get away from it all, to just be in a manly environment. Those guys used to train solid, hard as hell. Not much talking went on. They used to train hard. And then after they finished training, they had a protein shake. And at the counter, there were three or four stools. And they used to sit and chat. Then the guy over there finished his training. He came over. He had a bit of banter. He told us a couple of stories. This guy told us a few stories. We laughed at his stories. He laughed at his stories. We all had a good laugh, good little bit of banter and they walked out. It was therapy for most people. And I learned that more and more as I, as I owned more and more gyms, I understood that going to the gym was necessary for most people. To being around other red-blooded males was necessary. It's not just something that you go there and lounge around, hey, what's going on? No, 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 it wasn't that. This was a proper thing. This was a real brotherhood. You need that brotherhood. You absolutely need it. There's a lot of guys out there that are married. They just spend all the day with the missus, all the time with the missus, all the money with the missus. You try and get them on a lad's holiday 
I had one of the friends, we tried pulling them away from his missus, it wasn't happening. He ended up falling out with our group because all we wanted to do was spend time with our friend. That poor guy, I haven't seen him in oof, maybe 10, 12 years. So, you know, these things happen. This is the way life is. But I can almost guarantee you that if he had spent time with the guys, with the men, with, with a good set of friends, not idiots, make sure your mates are doing stuff. Those people are your therapy. And it's very evident today, if you look at the rate of suicide in males, working men's clubs have shut down, guys aren't hanging around with guys anymore, guys are friends with girls. I do not want to be friends with females. No offense. I do not find the company of females entertaining to me. I just don't, I just don't enjoy it, I never did, never have. Hanging around with females, for what purpose? If you have a good group of friends, you don't need feminine energy. You need to get away. There's plenty of feminine energy at home. I have a daughter, you know? I have a missus, I have a mom, I have a sister, I have a niece. That's plenty, bro. There's plenty estrogen right there. I need to go out and find new estrogen women that I'm not having sex with, to have friends as girls and hang about with them. No. Devote your energy for the estrogen people where it counts, where it matters. Don't be giving, you only have a limited amount of energy to give women. Give it to your daughter, give it to your wife, give it to your mom, give it to your sister. Those are the people you want to be spending time with, where women are concerned, not just random friends and girls. Some people might agree with that, some might not. You need a good brotherhood of guys. I'll tell you something what you should do as a start. And sometimes I do this and sometimes we don't. And I wish more and more guys did it. Set a group chat up with the boys. Instagram. Be active on there. Don't just be a watcher. Don't just leave it. Don't just waltz in and out of two, three guys. Out of, there's 10 people in the conversation. Just one message a day, bro, ain't gonna hurt you. It's gonna help you, it's gonna benefit you. Maybe the lads, the three or four lads in that group chat that are always talking, maybe they just want to just let off some steam. Maybe they want to have a bit of interaction, a little bit of lad banter for half an hour a day, bro. How hard is it? Send a meme, send a picture, tag something, watch this video, have you seen this, have you seen that? Send a link to Pornhub and they open it and there's some trannies waving some cocks, whatever it is, bro. Whatever it is, gotta do it. For the lads, simple as. Don't lose that. And that was one of the main things that I see that everybody's lost today. And I first saw that in the gym that I owned. Hopefully, guys, this gave you some value. Comment down below your first lad banter experiences. And please subscribe.